Did anybody ever come to you and say, hey, you're a saint? I hope so. But usually, what's the reaction to that? Oh, no, 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 I'm not a saint. Hey, if you know me, you know, you would know that I'm not a saint. Yeah, but you do such nice things. You're so pleasant. You get along with everybody, and you never complain, and you never use bad. You're a saint. Oh, no, please don't say that. We kind of recoil when somebody would notice the good things that we do. We just are afraid that what? I think maybe we don't want to become proud. And yet we probably know ourselves for every good quality. We kind of realize that we have a couple and three more, five more, nine more, fifteen more other kind of qualities. But do you know that's our vocation? There's no commandment that says thou shalt be a saint, but in so many words that's what Jesus said be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect and I don't know whether it's Matthew or Mark one of them say, says and it's okay be perfected and that's correct too be perfect yeah but how can I be perfect on our own we can't do it it's impossible for me even as a Franciscan even as a priest to become a saint unless I tap in tap in to the source of grace, who is God. It is God and His goodness that makes it possible for you and for me and for anyone to be good. Well, how about all the bad people in the world? There's always some good in every bad person. God never made anything all bad. And they just, little by little, hopefully, as for the, the, these people, as for everyone, God has given a span of life to be able to pass through from badness to goodness and little by little to eliminate some of the badness in favor of goodness and replace badness by goodness replace a bad habit by a good habit replace a bad word by a good word a bad attitude by a good attitude. So what is a saint? It's not so much what is a saint, but who is a saint? Or what is it that makes a person a saint? It's being close to the Lord. Why is it that the equator, people there, and the equator as such there, is such great heat? Because that part is very close to the sun. Well, why is it that uh, Alaska or even uh, the northwest regions our Arctic Circle is so cold because it's away from the sun. That's, you know that. And therefore, a saintly person is one who is so close to the Lord, the goodness of the Lord rubs off on that person, and the person allows it to be. And so everyone is called to be a saint. Oh, gee, you say, wow. I can't even keep my New Year's resolution less than being a saint. How can I possibly be a saint? Well, you just have to go to the one who helped you. Well, who? Well, by way of spiritual direction, sometimes that is a help, because the spiritual director is able to make a diagnosis and say, well, now, if you don't do this, then that will happen. If you would change this, and then that would happen, you see? So now, but the real spiritual director is the Holy Spirit, and he is the sanctifier. The sanctifier. He's the one who helps to make us holy, and he's the source of holiness. Well, all right then. Is it a good thing to be holy? Oh, yes, of course it is. Yeah, but people make fun of you sometimes. Ah, oh, there goes the fanatic. Ah, oh, there goes the holy one. And sometimes when they meet you, oh, they bow. There's the sanctified one. Well, sometimes people are jealous. And sometimes they just do it by way of getting around. Deep down in their hearts, they appreciate the goodness in a person. But let me tell you something. Why do you think that God, when He brought us into the world, did not allow us to be thinkers right off the bat? For me, it took seven years at least. Why? Because in His own wisdom, He knows that we must be first formed in goodness and then smarts. The world is saying it otherwise. 
two-year-old watches television. The mother says, oh, my little boy is so smart. Well, I'm sure that he is. Or, but that's not according to God's plan. We were put into this life first to learn about goodness. And when we separate goodness from truth, when we separate our heart from the mind, we're in trouble. And what is a saint, or who is a saint, and what does a saint do? He's got them together under God, allowing God by way of the Spirit to pump goodness into him, into her. Yes, Holy Spirit, you may sanctify me. Because if you sanctify me, then I can cope with life a little better. I can cope with the people who don't like me. I can cope with my own limitations. I can cope with my own failings and, and even sins. I can cope with if you pump goodness into me. That's what it is. A good person, a person who what lives and thrives on goodness, lives in goodness, lives with goodness, is a saint. And so that's the challenge. Do I want to be a saint? Well, are you talking about the small s or the big s? What do you mean? A canonized saint, like Saint Anthony, Saint Francis, Saint Clare, Saint Rita. Well, no, I don't aspire to do that. Well, then you aspire to be a saint with a small s? Oh, yes, okay. Now, that's a good thing. It's not up to me that I want a church to canonize me. It's not for me to say that. But yes, if Jesus wants me to be holy, all right. But then comes the help that I get from the Holy Spirit. And we even call him the Holy Spirit. Because that's what a saint is, is a holy person. Holy. We should never be ashamed to say, I want to be holy. I want to be holy. We should never be afraid of that. Yeah, but people make fun of you. Not all people. Not everyone. And God is pleased. Then who are you on this earth? To, why are you on this earth? Who are you here to please? People? Well, well, yeah, I know. Human respect. But we're not here to please people. If we please God and we become pleasing to God, we can't help but be pleasing to people unless jealousy erupts within their heart for the fact that we're so good, we're so kind, we're so loving, and they're not. Well, we can cope with that if we are holy. Therefore, know that Jesus had put into our midst sanctifying elements. Baptism is a sanctifying element. The Eucharist is a sanctifying element. The sacrament of matrimony is a sanctifying element, and there are others where if we make use of them, they're like channels of grace, channels of making us holy. Every time we participate properly at Mass, it's a sanctifying element. Yes, it's important for me to say, okay, I want to be holy, because you know what? Only holy people get to heaven. If you don't want to be holy, hey, you got to, you know where you're going. There's nobody going to be holy down below. But if you want to get to heaven, start now. Because holiness is the ticket to heaven. And people who are not quite holy, but are pretty good, not too bad, they have a little detour. We call it purgatory, where they're cleansed. Because otherwise, only holy people can get to heaven. If they have the smallest blemish, the smallest bit of selfishness, they could not get to heaven. And the Lord in His goodness has designed this place called purgatory. And so many people don't even know about it. That's sad. You can call it what you want. It's a detour. Where the person is put there before he can enter or she can enter heaven because not ready. So then when they go and are cleansed and they're in heaven, everybody in heaven is holy. So we might as well start working on it. The Lord has given us plenty of opportunities, plenty of channels of grace, so that if I really mean business, I want to be good. I want to be holy. I can be. And you know what? It helps me to make the world better. It helps me to make it possible for people to be more happy. Because when I'm holy, I'm also kind. I'm generous and I'm gentle and I'm considerate and thoughtful. And that helps for making a better family, a better world.